Okay, here we are with the classic scenario of the absolutely mint vintage amp. In this case, it's a 65 Deluxe Reverb. And um, this year alone, probably three or four different guys have bought it and sold it and traded it back and forth because it sounds bad. And um, this amp has also been to several technicians, and each time it's come back sounding equally bad and then goes up for sale. So a friend of mine bought it, and... Uh, here we are um, in the middle of the amp solving all the problems and all the problems are just textbook stuff I've told you guys about before and all the classic scenarios so the first thing I discovered when I got into the amp was that the last technician who had biased it and keep in mind this amp even had uh, new old stock glass across the board in the amp so the last person had worked on it had changed the power tubes to some more recent ones and adjusted the bias to the coldest setting that could be tweaked here with the bias adjustment. So that's how it came back from a professional technician and I'm not knocking I'm not knocking uh, these guys but this is this is why I'm making these videos and this is why at the end of the day if you want your amp to sound the best you pretty much have to learn some of this stuff unless you have a guy who's really good. So it was set to the, the lowest uh, bias setting, so the amp was producing almost no power. This amp also has another problem, which uh, it's, it's not the first time I've seen it, but it's the first time it's been as bad as I've seen here. And that is, all of these electrolytic caps that set the bias for the preamp stages, these little brown cardboard cylinders here, are actually severely microphonic. So those have to be changed and typically when I work on an amp, and again this is this will be why most technicians make mistakes with these amps, typically when I work on this type of amp I don't want to change everything that normally gets changed simply because you'd like to open up the amp and see some of the original stuff that came with it and there's no point in buying a 30 year old amp, sorry in this case a 50 year old amp and having 100% new parts all the way through a completely rebuilt amp it probably isn't going to sound the way you expect it to sound. So, what do you change? You change the power supply elect electrolytics on the other side and you change all of these electrolytics which have a shelf life of about 10 years so at 50 years old they're done. But that's probably the worst scenario I've ever heard with these things. We're going to swap them out. So this is the typical cap can you find underneath classic fender amp. You want to, unless you know what you're doing, you want to stay out of here. Um, this is where you will get your shock from. But I want to show you this. So this is, these are the new filters and I've dated each one simply because uh, we want to be able to know when they uh, when they need replacing. They last about 10 years. In the case of the original filters in this amp, they were 50 years old, so about 40 years past their expiry date. Um, in this case, I've used uh, 16 microfarad, which is what the original originals were in there. Uh, one, two, three, four, five of them. Um, and one of the most critical things you want to do when you're replacing filters is you do not want to make the assumption that adding filtering will improve the sound of the amp. Nine times out of ten you will trash the beautiful vintage character of your amplifier and then the amp becomes one of those amps that is constantly bought and sold and bought and sold and doesn't sound right and then someone like me will buy it fairly cheaply make it right and then have a great sounding vintage amp. Uh, that sounds like an egotistical thing to say, but that's where I got all my great old amps from, buying ones that weren't working right and figuring all this stuff out step by step um, until they sounded right. Uh, the other thing that you can do is if you have a reissue amp or a later silver face amp or an amp that has been badly mangled, um, one of the critical things you can do to improve it is you can go into the amp, find the really large filters that, uh, you know, typically, even if the technician has the right intention, 
uh, and you have a an older amp like this you find these 22 500 volt Chinese caps which are fine except 22 is probably the max you ever want to use uh, in this amp more likely you find these much larger 47 mic uh, guys where someone's got the bright idea that uh, extra filtering is going to reduce the noise level and and uh, make the amp happier and in fact what it does is it totally changes the character of the distortion envelope and the sustain uh, too much filtering kills your sustain it just makes the amp uh, immovable and 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 not flexible and not bouncy to your pick attack so you want to very carefully avoid um, over filtering the most you can do if you're using an amp like this on a large stage um, is you can up the first filter right off the rectifier tube the the limit is 60 microfarads after that you're probably going to short out your rectifier tube so you can go up to 60 but then you strictly want to stick with the 16 16 16 16 to re retain the vintage character of the preamp in some cases where someone's looking for a more tweed style character you could go you could still go with the 60 here but then you would go 10 10 10 10 you get to a point where you start to get some noise creeping into it but you should get a good pick attack and envelope that way okay so this uh, 65 deluxe is done and just to sum up what we found uh, these electrolytics the original ones that do the uh, set the bias for the preamp were completely microphonic and just rattly like crazy so now the amp is dead quiet no problems at all and we did find one partially uh, cold solder joint on a resistor here in the feedback loop which also would have contributed to a lot of the noise and so now the amp is uh, recapped on the other side with the exact 16 16 16 original style filters uh, American made uh, exact value uh, American made Sprague um, bypass caps and a brand new uh, electrolytic for the bias supply so the amp is good for the next 50 years and it actually sounds really really good surprise surprise